So with that, sorry for a few minutes late this morning. We had a New York train, weekend train uh, kind of thing going on. Um, but uh, otherwise, I think if anybody, if anybody has any questions, um, Steve is really open to that. Feel free to interact. And um, let's see, we do have a group of acupuncturists here now, a group of rolfers, and one uh, physical therapist. And uh, we know that, and you are massage, and we have a couple of massage therapists here. I'm sorry, to mention. so we have a good group, and and a doctor uh, in the background here. Sorry. As far as we know. As far as we know. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't actually seen the diploma, so we're not, we're not sure. Um, so this is great. We're at, you know, the group is growing, and because it's growing and she's growing, we're planning on doing the full 12 module program starting in uh, starting in the uh, fall. So this group, this course, will be a part of that. So um, really, really happy to have everybody here. So glad I'm not traveling to Hong Kong every three months to, to study with Steve anymore. Um, but he's here in New York, and well, let's see. Take it from here. Thank you very much. Thanks. I need some. I'm gonna need some water just to. Oh, oh. And all, here all this time, I thought you were drawn to me for looks. <laughs> but I'm fine. Okay. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, you, you can ask me any question. You can stop me in the middle. I'm, I'm very open to everything that you want to say. I'm, uh, as you'll see, I'm not married to dogma at all. I'm going to show you visceral, and I've, I've learned visceral from a lot of different pathways. Um, everything that comes out of my mouth, um, hopefully, uh, is clinical. Everything that I've done, I've done with patients, more so than, than seminars. And the seminars grew out later, but um, if I'm doing something, it's got practical uses. I'm not doing... Um, things that are just um, that don't have a, a real application to it. And if you ask me something that I don't know, I'm very comfortable telling you I don't know. It doesn't not going to make me stutter at all. I'm from Philadelphia. We're tough. Uh, if I'm a little slow, it's because I'm fat, old, out of breath, coming up. And uh, this month I just had four weeks. That, that's it. I'll just tell you right now. Just four weeks you never want to have. My computer crashed. Paul knows because he got the, the long distance. My computer crashed and I have a backup. I'm very anal retentive about many, many, many things. And I have a backup with a RAID 5 configuration and two of those four drives crashed. And I spent, yeah, so I lost 15 years of everything. So for four weeks I was trying to do this long distance in Thailand with a computer hacker friend of mine. And um, I just got everything back this week I can't, in Philadelphia. Yeah. Yeah, it cost me a few thousand bucks to, to pick apart a crash drive, yeah. but um, um, yeah, so it was it was more staying up all every night and trying to do stuff to do it. So it, it really uh, it really affected me. I would honestly rather had a car crash. <laughs> I'm not even kidding you. I would rather wreck my car than, than go through that again. But I'm not like asking for that. So if there's like a power that, <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure how that whole system works. I'm not asking for it. <laughs> So we're going to talk about visceral manipulation. What we're going to do first, um, similar for those of you who went through the cranial, um, and I just have to give the preface for the few people that don't know me. I am clinically based, so I got to give you the why and the what if and, and, and why we should do things. So my, my premise and the groups that I talk to around the world are all healthcare practitioners of different, different levels, massage, PT, it's, it's the rare doctor that we get. Um, John studied with me before. Um, so you're in, the, you're in the rare minority of doctors who actually do something. Um, do, docs look at me as a curiosity, that more so than they're actually going to put their hands on a patient. And everyone I work with is, is, um, has been through anatomy and physiology before, so I don't want to be the first one introducing it. I need you to understand why this should work. And I, I have to compare that with other groups where they're just going to ask me incessantly, and Paul can tell you about this. The Chinese just want to know where to push here t to fix that problem. And I'm not that guy. If you're looking for that, push here and it fixes that problem. I'm not the guy for that. It's really the lowest way to practice. There is some element of that for sure, and I'll try and highlight both elements. This technique works for the shoulder. This technique works for the back. I'll give it to you. But it works. It works. Mm -hmm. And it's, you can make the noise. It's, it's not a movie theater. It's OK. Um, so it works on its highest level if you find a problem in the body and you fix the problem, more so then do this thing for that kind of problem. Having said that, I get asked incessantly, and it's more of a third world thing, where they'll say, yes, I heard you, but can you tell me, do you push here, does it fix that problem? And in the Arab world as well, which Hashem and I have exchanged about a gazillion emails, because I'm spending a lot of time. And um, 
So I'm going to give you all of it as much as I can. But for the first hour, I'm um, just going to review some, some slides, some anatomy, and I think you have the PDFs or you have something on your computer, or whatever Paul gave you. Or if you don't have it, you can get it from me. And I'm accessible by email. That's probably the most accessible that I am because I, I travel all the time. So I will answer your email. You have questions and um, not a problem. But if you send me an email with, I got this and then it goes on for pages and pages, yeah, you're probably not going to get a long answer to that. So, um, okay. Everything that I'm going to give you for visceral manipulation is going to be from an osteopathic perspective because that's what I am. Much like Popeye, I am what I am. I learned these things in osteopathic medical school, which they didn't really care about osteopathy. It was basically medical school. We learned a variety of things. And the founder certainly was an MD Civil War surgeon who just did stuff. He didn't do visceral manipulation, he didn't do cranial manipulation, he just did stuff. But his premise was that you should study the anatomy and physiology and design the technique to do what it is you wanted, uh, what it is you wanted to do. So I want to just respect the man. Some concepts. We're going to talk about two different concepts this weekend, mobility and motility. And these are two different concepts. Mobility is big movement. Uh, we're going to talk about how big organs move and how they affect other big structures. You don't have to be, uh, have any special, well, no, not true. You don't have to have a, uh, feel some rhythm that people talk about, like cranial. Who's the, has everyone done cranial in the room, people that haven't been in this course? done a cranial thing? Okay. I mean, cranial, there's uh, moving bones and there's also a rhythm that people talk about. In visceral, we're going to move guts around and your guts are going to get moved around. This will not be like a cranial weekend. Cranial weekend, everybody walks out, they're feeling elevated, they're feeling the music and whatever. That's not this weekend at all. You're just going to, you're going to crawl out of here this weekend after, after digging in your guts. Um, there is the element of, of mobility. Things move because your diaphragm moves. It doesn't require you to feel rhythm that we're talking about. Motility is an inherent motion that the liver goes through, a little dance that it does. It's a dance that the sphincter-like areas do in your intestines. It's a dance that the stomach does. That some of you are gonna feel, some of you are not gonna feel. So we're gonna, we're gonna be going in and out between both of these things all weekend. I want to give you my own experience of it when I started visceral manipulation, just so I, I don't ask you to believe anything. Um, I was not of the, uh, well, I'm going to need like, uh, I just want something to just, like some paper towels or something. Tell we're in the OR, sponge, sponge me. I'm dying. I'm going to come to people and a lot of it was, I was told, you know, believe this because I'm telling you. I'm not telling you any of that. I want to give you the information. <coughs> when I first did Visceral, I took uh, a course with Dan Bensky, who's the guy who translated Burrell's books, and we all did this small course in our school, and um, everybody loved it, everybody was feeling this and feeling that, and me and another friend were like, yeah, this is the most useless crap, we're never, never going to use this ever, walked away from it. And now I would say it's a lot of what I do. I do a lot of Visceral, I do a lot of Cranial, I do a lot of uh, myofascial do a little bit of mobilizing things, a little bit of muscle energy, a little bit of everything else. But it's a lot of what I do. And when I heard it all, I said, yeah, I'm not lifting anybody's liver ever. I'm not giving that explanation ever. Um, I don't feel any rhythm. Everyone else felt something, I felt nothing. So if you don't feel rhythm this weekend, don't feel bad. A lot of people walk away and feel nothing. I want you to understand <coughs> what is there so that you can come back to it so you can learn it on your patients. Because that's how we learn. It's how we learned in medical school. No one wants to realize that. But at some point, you know, we say, see one, do one, teach one. You know, at some point, some surgeon did the first gallbladder by themselves. The patient probably doesn't know they were the first one. With us, it's a lot safer than taking a gallbladder out. At some point, if you put your hands on people's liver and you understand the theory, at some point, I believe you'll hear the music. Not only will you hear the music, but it's useful to, for you. Talking about the liver dance and the stomach dance, it has use, or I wouldn't be talking about it. I don't talk about fluff just for fluff. Okay, so the motility I think will be challenging for some of you. Mobility will just be painful, but you all understand it. Because I will do it to you, to, I will do it, I will do to you whatever you want me to, 
English isn't even coming out right. I'll do it to you, so you'll feel it as deep as it can be. And I'll go deeper than most of you will do with each other. And it'll be more tolerable from me, probably, because I'm smoother at it. And I'll be able to go deeper. And we'll get into how you do that, how you do depth and all that. This will be one of those things that you do to patients that um, you've got to prepare them for a little bit before you dig in somebody's abdomen really hard and their eyes come out. But there's reasons why they tolerate it. They tolerate it because the techniques work. Or I don't want to say the techniques work, it works for a therapist. The techniques from the right pair of hands, they're very good techniques. Okay, so that's enough preamble. So there's mobility and there's motility. There's things that are going to move because they do, they do gross motion. They move when we take a big breath in. And there's things that we have a uh, sort of a belief system as to what's happening. And we'll, we'll talk about both of them. When we talk about motility, things moving with the rhythm, there's other